Hello and good day all. This is the Helium 29 back again for Super Sun's Fortress of Attitude. And um, I thought I'd cover something a little something a little bit different um, today. And as you can see here, we've got uh, DC Comics. Or should we say DC or Detective Comics covering um the batman versus robin series and i was hoping of having a bit of a look through this so as we can see here we've got uh quite a bit of a picture being shown here uh we've got flatline um give me maya over flatline anytime at least she's got character and isn't a um a fangirl of eva talia or selena Of course, we've got Batman and Damien Wayne Robin here and a picture of Alfred. So I thought I'd have a bit of a look through this uh, as it's a uh, somewhat a DC preview of what is to be expected in September. So as you can see here, um, we've caught got a picture of the actual cover or one of the main covers and the first is called chapter one reunion so we've already got a bit of a heads up of what to expect so it says, spinning out of the events of Batman vs. Superman, World's Finest and Shadow War, Father and Son will do battle in one of the single most earth-shattering tales ever told by DC's new comic book series, Batman vs. Robin by Mark Wade and Mahmoud Asra, uh, which launches in September 13. So uh, by the time that my September reviews go up, no doubt it will... Uh, connect with what I'll be reviewing on the channel, um, which will be showing on the channel for October. So you'll have my September stuff going up in October. So uh, deep in the heart of Lazarus Island, the, dem the demonic legacy of the Algul fa family line has at last been freed. And the devil Neza is out for blood to reclaim his total domination over planet Earth. Neza has supercharged magic, and anyone who dares use it to overcome by a demonic evil that supercharges and clutches and Bruce haunted by the return of an old friend. The Dark Knight... And the boy wonder are pissed one against another in a battle of the tw of the century. Legendary writer Mark Wade. Now, one thing I want to say: um, Should Mark Wade ever get to hear this, keep Damian Wayne a hero. I mean it. Keep Damian Wayne a hero, and I want him to remain a hero in the DC universe. Why? I want more Super Sons. That's why. <laughs> um. Not only that, the Super Sons was good for his character, as well, as it was also good for um, John Samuel's Kent character when he was at the best age. Um, and that's the truth. So... And... Uh, story picks up from Batman vs. Superman was world's finest um, and witnessed the possible return of a key character in an ongoing Batman and Robin conflict. So this is going to be interesting. Now, I will actually show... Um,
some of the internal with the story here, but I want to get through the rest of this first and also what we see here. Uh, Batman versus Robin, a new five issue with 48 pages each, series by Mark Wade, Jordi Belair, and Steve Wands, launches in September 13. Main cover Batman versus Robin. Uh, and of course, we've got the trailer below. Something is horribly wrong in the magic realm. And it seems like Damian Wayne might actually be the cause of this somehow. Zatanna is obviously a big part of issue one. Constantine, the demon, Felix Faust, Tanarak. You're going to be seeing as many of the magic characters as, as we have in this universe. With Batman Superman World's Finest, we've made no secret that the devil Neza, who is the villain there, is also going to be one of the big villains in Batman vs. Robin. Mahmood is great. The character likenesses are bang on. The way he handles Batman is terrific. He takes advantage of the real estate that I give him, and he doesn't squawk when I shovel just gobs and gobs of magical artifact reference at him. Batman vs. Robin ties very strongly into the future of the DC Universe. There's something that happens in the climax that will affect dozens and dozens of DC characters, minor and major. All right, so now let's have a bit of a look at what... So we'll now have a bit of a look as to what it actually shows on the inside of this. And as we can see here, we've got quite a bit happening. Oh, hold on. I better do this. As you can see here, we've got quite a bit happening. And of course, there's the first page. We get a bit of a look. And we'll just... we've got Batman and Robin together. And it's really nice how um, Mark Wade shows how Robin, or this Robin, Damien Wayne, is connected to two worlds. Um, the world of the Waynes and the world of the Al Ghouls. And this gives like a real big hint as to a lot that's happened. Uh, his mother, the daughter of the demon, and the heir of the Al Ghul legacy. The only issue here is that <laughs> that I sort of want to address up is that if this is going to be used, um, especially properly, uh, they'd be better off fixing up some of this art to sort of like show like when he was originally under Talia Al Ghul. But understanding that this is also bringing over a bit of a connection between the, the Joshua Williamson run and present run. There's quite a bit that they're missing, um, especially in some of the arts execution. Um, for this, uh, as you can see here, this actually shows a little bit of the art that connects to when he like first met Batman on one side. But it's also integrating some of the art in connection to the Joshua Williamson run art. And... If anything, he should really be wearing this um, in this first part. So that's just a minor criticism of what I see right now with this. 
But let's not just say that we won't be good. Of course, we've got the tragedy struck. Now, this is um, showing the connection of when they lost Alfred. Of course, showing how they work together as father and son, which is absolutely amazing. And so, as well as also addressing the terrible crap that happened under Adam Glass. So we'll move to the next page. And we return to the Wayne Manor. And we've got this stranger who's uh, turning up in Gotham City. And as we look here, we've got Bruce. And he's looking outside. We get a bit of a discussion there. We also get to see him even looking at the family photos, including with Damian Wayne, which I really like. I, I think the artist has done a pretty decent job with this. We look to the rest and we find out that there's a bit of a knock at the door and big surprise guess who it is so this is going to be really interesting i hope the explanation for this will be really good um as to how um alfred is actually back to life in this and if we were to get it anywhere, I really hope we get it in the first issue because being 48 pages in each issue, um, they should definitely be able to cover it, even if it's within three pages. And then we move into the main chapter page. And I must admit, I think this is absolutely brilliant, uh, the way how this is done. Um, it's really nice to see this. So we've got Batman, Gotham City's Dark Knight, and Detective Robin, son of Batman, and heir to the heir of the Ghoul Dynasty. The boy wonder has aspired to walk in his father's path of righteousness, but his demonic lineage has been reignited. For months, Robin has traveled the world uh, disowned by Batman. Um, one problem there, yes, um, it has me interested too, Tevier, as to why, um, Alfred is also alive. So I really hope Mark Wade explains why he's alive or how he's been brought back to life because we're really going to need this in the story. Um, but the thing is, he wasn't disowned by Batman. That's the thing, that, right? This is an error. Um, he was not disowned by Matt. Batman, even at the end of um, the Shadow War run, he was not disowned by him. He was not disowned by him um, after the Robin No More saga. And this is another problem. Stop retconning this shit. I mean it. This shit needs to stop. <laughs> and um right make Damian Wayne a hero right because one of the best things that was that really worked in Damian's favor was also having a friend to help him aspire to being a better Robin or better a better superhero it was the young John Samuel Kent and we really need to see these two reunited. And 
Um, of course, it speaks of him. Um, his sojourn has brought him to Lazarus Island and where an ancient evil beckons him and a deadly magical threat from Batman's past stands poised to murder the Cape Crusader and tear the world asunder. And of course, we got here, it's called Reunion. And he was not disowned by his father. That is a complete lie, right? If you look at the Peter J. Tomasi Detective Comics run, he was not disowned by his father. You go to the Joshua Williamson run, as much as many people love it or hate it, right? At the end of the Shadow War event, he was not disowned by his father. And here's Mark Wade saying he was. No, he wasn't. Now, I wouldn't mind going to something else. So I'll just fix this up because I want to show you something. Um, especially in... The upcoming uh, in AIPT. Uh, where is it? There. All right, now moving on to the next thing that I want to show. Yeah, I, you know what, Tevier, I'm sick of these retcons too. All right, because we both pay attention to what's been happening in the story. And all it takes is a jerk like this that ignore the story. And ignore the continuity. And um, as we move in here, I must admit, I really like this. Now, as we get a bit of a preview in regards to this, of course, we've got the Robin variants, which I'll be getting all, say, the main plus the variants. All right, we get a bit of a look here. All right, and this is just connecting to a lot of the previous stuff that's happened in the story so far. All right, and I really like this. And of course, we get this bit of an introduction as to what's happening in this last volume presently of um, the Damien Wayne Robin series. Yeah, the only retcon I would accept is if we get a retcon with our boy John Samuel Kent Superboy and de age him back to normal. Yeah, I would totally be up for that. And I really want to see the Super Sons back. Now, Mark Way, yeah, as much as he's writing, say, a good World's Finest, which I'm actually planning on getting a review done for um, the August, or third week of August reviews, uh, which will be my first one uh, on the channel, to which I'll be covering. Of course, we get to see this. 
And of course, we've got something happening here with Mother Soul. And as things appear, um, again, someone is not paying attention to the story. And by the looks of things, it looks like Mother Soul is actually responsible for Damien Wayne to being possessed. But we'll wait until we get the full story. In relation to this. And, um... And, of course, Deaf Man, well, gets a taste of his own medicine. So, I'll stop that there. And, I must admit... It's time for DC to end turning, say, even legacy characters into villains, right? I'm sick of this shit. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> I mean it. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, as with it, it really gets annoying. And if they really want a villain called... Damien, number one, create your own Damien. In fact, I've got an idea which you can freely use. All right? Here's my idea, and I've even posted it on Twitter. And this is, how about you create your own Damien, different surname, and make his villain name omen or the omen and he could actually be a good villain or rival for damien damien wayne so in that he could be what damien does not want to be right sure he might have a similar skill set to damien wayne i mean it he could have a similar skill set to Damien Wayne. Now, to anyone who's seen, like, the Omen movies, like, I like the idea of that sort of, like, evil villain Damien. Yes, it's in its own world, but how about DC create their own Damien, somewhat similar to that um, evil Damien, call him the, or call his villain name the Omen, and as something we both know, we say in regards to both characters, right? They have both played a part in the area of the supernatural. And that's the thing. They've both played a part in the area of the supernatural. And sure, one is sort of like set like an apocalyptic doomsday type story where the other one's something else. Um, but in the comics, but maybe bring that character over. This one becomes the villain, say the Damien plus, or you could even call him Damien Stone, for example, or Damien Stone, <laughs> something like that. Um, Damien, for example, for exa um, meets him in combat. Learns that he's a villain. But he's got no plan of changing his ways. In other words, this character could practically be Damien's version of the Joker. Sure, he might share the same first name, but his surname is different. I think that would be great for DC Comics to use. So therefore, Damien has something that he can look on and say, I don't want to become like that. I want to be better than that. 
right? If you want your 666 evil Batman, use the Omen as that character. Not Damian Wayne. Like, give him a character that refuses to leave their evil deeds behind. And I think that would really work in the DC universe. Like, this character could even be a bit of a threat to even John Samuel Kent. Why? Because he's not afraid to use magic on supers. (laughs) <laughs> or super-powered heroes. And what would be more of a threat to Damien? Someone who also threatens his friends. That would work so much better for his character than stupid retcons just to ruin his character to ruin all the growth that he has gained before give him a villain literally give him a villain that becomes basically his joker <laughs> maybe even uh, maybe the demon Nesa can DH our boy John Samuel Kent. <laughs> well, of what we've seen so far in regards to um, Neza, in the storytelling, yes, we understand that he is a type of magic character as well. Maybe he could do something like that. But I reckon being a villain, if he really wanted to piss off Damien Wayne, he wouldn't de-age John Samuel Kent. He'd age him up even more. In other words, um, You remember in, I think it was Volume 2, Planet of the Capes? What if we had what happened in Planet of the Capes, instead of happening it to um, Damien Wayne to where he was aged to be a grandpa... (laughs) What if John got to experience that? Right? What happens if um John was actually aged to be a grandpa? <laughs> so it becomes a bit of a role reversal. But when they sort of like work on getting John DH to back to where he was, um Maybe something goes wrong and he gets returned back to age 10, but he forgets um, his history in regards to the Legion of Superheroes and all that. And all the crap that's happened before that, like all of the stuff in relation to what Bendis did, all of that history gets erased. And... Say, for example, Damien or his father might ask him about it and he might say, who? What? Who are they? Right? That would actually work for the character. And once that also happens there, it also affects the timeline to which he was in. So, in other words, the Bendis universe and the Tom Taylor universe no longer exists. After that occurs. In other words, it becomes like a distant memory, no longer to be remembered, (laughs) but to be forgotten completely. (laughs) Like, it would be like seeing Neza as sort of like a 
supernatural type villain, I could definitely see him aging John Samuel Kent up to grandpa age, to which he would be unable to fight him. Right? Because that's what a villain would do. He would he would bring a character to a state to which they would be unable to fight back. Sure, there is the D-Age idea, but if you're going to bring in the D-Age, well, it's got to include this additional stuff in it too. So it really makes you think as to what really can work for some of these stories. So it's really good to talk about um, this particular issue in the comics um, with what's coming up. And I know it's coming out in September when we're almost moving into September now. We're about one week away. But two weeks away until practically the first haul comes out. And if it's something that DC really needs to stop doing, yeah, retcons are, some retcons are seriously bad. They need to end. Like, when a new writer comes onto a character, especially Damien, number one, they don't look at what has come before. That's the thing. They don't look at what has come before. And by doing that, they ignore continuity and that's a lot of crap that bendis has done plus other writers um i I even admit even tom taylor can be really lazy with that continuity stuff now There are definitely some things that they could really do to fix it up. (laughs) And that's the truth. There are definitely some things that they could do to fix it up. And by fixing it up is have writers that definitely pay attention to what came before them. Like, we need these writers to pay attention to what comes before. And Batman never disowned, for a fact, Damian Wayne. Like, in regards to this Batman versus Robin. He never disowned him. Not even in the Grant Morrison, he never disowned him. Not even in the Tinian, he did not disown him.
even in um, not just the Tinian, um, even in the Tom King run, he did not disown him. And that's the stupid thing about these rises. He did not disown Damian Wayne. He still accepted him as his son. Ah. <laughs> Absolutely bloody crazy. Well, a big thanks to all who managed to jump to this live stream. Um, as I know I don't normally do live streams at this time, but I was wanting to talk about this preview as to what had been shared to us by DC Comics. And uh, I do plan on reviewing um, the Batman versus Robin event on the Super Sons Fortress of Attitude side of things. So it will go up on that website. I really hope they explain how Alfred has come back to life or what led to Alfred's resurrection. Because you can definitely say one, one thing about this. It doesn't look like he was brought back to life by the Lazarus resin. That is something that you can tell about his character. So the next question is, who brought Alfred back to life? <laughs> and that I look forward to in the story because we know in the um batman versus oh, batman and superman world's finest um in that we do get to see alfred's appearance as to when that is actually set set in place so as to who resurrected or brought Alfred back to life, I presently got no idea. And I mean, I presently got no idea. But if you've got any ideas of who might have brought Alfred back to life, um, definitely share it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you got to say. Um, I don't think it would be Zatanna, but there are more than just one magic user in the DC Comic Universe. Well, a big thanks to all who made it to this live stream. And I'll see you again at Super Sutton's Fortress of Attitude. Thank you.